Hello and welcome everybody. It's Matt from MCG Games. Bob. Today I've got an awesome deck tech of Volo Itinerant Scholar with the Master Chef background. This is the $250 deck tech and a wrap up of the league that I was in for the Jake and Joel R. Magic's budget league. Starts off as $100 and then each week you get to add $50, bucks, ending at $250 near the month. And uh, I won first place with Volo. He was, uh, he's pretty dang good actually. He's kind of nuts. Uh, so I had 19 points, and the next person below me had 13. So I had quite a large, quite a large lead. I could have like probably not even showed up the last week and still got first. But yeah, uh, Volo, I was actually pretty disappointed when I first pulled him. Or, like it was randomly generated for you. Basically, it was like a wheel that you, they spun, and then it to uh, whatever whatever it lands on is the the uh, thing you get to pick the the commander. Uh, you get to pick the background because he had partner. Or, or, well, choose a background. So, Volo, just in case you guys don't know who he is or what he is, uh, three mana. When it enters the battlefield, you create a Volo's journal token. And basically, that journal token has hexproof. And whenever you cast a creature, it doesn't have to resolve. Whenever you cast a creature, you note one of its creature types. Kind of write it down somewhere. Like, I, I had like a dry erase thing, which was pretty cool. Very helpful. And uh, you note one of its creature types. And then, Volo has two colorless mana, tap him. Draw a card for each creature type noted for the permanent you control named Volo's Journal. And then the background that I went with it was Master Chef. I initially didn't think that this was going to be too impactful, but I just wanted access to green. But it actually turns out that I started playing it first before anything. Um, it just makes your creatures a bit more resilient. And then there's a Planeswalker that makes your creatures that have one with counters tap for any color mana. It turns all of your, you know, zero and one drops into Birds of Paradises. And it also turns your zero drops... Your X to zero drop cards, you don't have to pay any mana for them, so this makes it free. So surprisingly, a lot of synergy between the two. I was initially not thinking it was going to be that big of a deal. Uh, so yeah, this is the $250 budget, and I may do a no no budget version of the deck. I think that's probably what I'll do next. And then also keep an eye on the channel for... I've got to go back and do my initial Double Masters uh, review that I said I was going to do. I'm a little bit behind on videos, so apologies. But I will do that probably within the next day or two. Then this. Uh, so this is the $250 budget. And then next budget will come. On budget version will probably come later on. I don't think it'll change that much, honestly. The deck pilots pretty dang well. There's only like, a, even you know, obviously fetch lands and dual lands. Like you could spike the value up pretty heavily if you really need, you wanted to or have the cards to. But it's not really required. But at any rate... This is the Planeswalker I was talking about, Zhang Yanggu. He turns all of your creatures that have 1-1 one -one counters, he turns them into Birds of Paradise. You've got Arbor Elf as a Mana Dork. Birds of Paradise as a Mana Dork. Cloud of Fairies is a fairy and basically a free casting creature because you tap 2 for it, but then it untaps 2 lands when it enters the battlefield. If you were using the, the bounce lands that tap for multiple mana, you could gain some mana in this. Potentially worth it, but it could slow you down because I really don't like the bounce lands, to be quite honest. Clothing Oracle, three different types, uh, creature types, and then also has a relevant effect. When it enters the battlefield, you get to reveal the top card. If it's a land, you put it in your hand. If not, you or if it's, it's a land, you put it into the battlefield, untapped. And if it's not, you put it into your hand. You've got Cryptic Trilobite. This actually is a free creature, which is a Trilobite, which is, you know, a, a rare creature type. And uh, the ability to remove a 1-1 one -one counter and I'll activate Volo's ability is pretty nice. But if you don't do it that turn and you wait till it gets around to your turn or if you have the Thousand Year Elixir, you can actually pay a colorless mana, tap hit, create a 1-1 one -one counter on it, and then remove the 1-1 one -one counter to then add 2 mana. So it makes Volo's ability cost 1 less, basically. And if you don't remove the last counter, then you're good. If you do remove the last counter, it's not that big of a deal. Like if you want to just keep drawing uh, multiple times, if you have ways to untap Volo, that's fine to let him die. It's perfectly fine. You need to get to your combo piece that turn or whatever, kill him. It's fine. Dead Eye Navigator. I did get this combo off. Um, this is the Dead Eye Navigator and the Peregrine Drake uh, combo, where if you have both of them on the battlefield, you soul bomb them, and then you're able to pay two mana to flicker which is Exile and bring back Peregrine Drake. Once you have five lands, so you're up three mana, and you do that an infinite number of times, infinite mana, then you win the game. Uh, that's a Mana Dark. Uh, this is a zero drop, just Eldrazi. Again, with uh, the Master Chef, this is free, and it counts as a journal entry. Uh, Eternal Witness, this is just to get stuff back from your graveyard. I feel like a combo piece gets milled or countered or destroyed. Another Mana Dork. Vaish Druid is another Mana Dork, but 
it has like an infinite mana combo with uh, the uh, per uh, Penman's Aura and the Freed from the Real. So you could go infinite as long as there's a one counter. It taps for three and then you use one to untap it. So infinite. Yours followers just a mana dork slash volo untapper slash whatever you need to untap. It's an untap target permanent. And it is a merfolk, which is notable. If you notice all the creatures in the deck, they typically won't share a creature type. The, all the mana dorks do, they're all elf druids typically. Um, but for instance, this one is actually a human druid, so human would be a very rare creature type in this deck, and it allows you to ramp by play it. You get the human trigger from the journal, then you sacrifice it, add land in, and just keep going. Laboratory Maniac is one of the win cons. Typically, you get infinite mana and um, a way to untap your mana or untap all of your permanents a bunch. You tap a bunch with Volo, you draw a bunch of cards, and then you play Lab Maniac and win the game. Land of just another mana dork. Mass Vandal is just a way to exile um, our artifacts or enchantments. It's typically not too hard to get some of your creatures to die, so it's not that big a deal to have to exile something from your graveyard. But it can be a little annoying. But if anything, it's just a shape changer that allows you to just pick whatever the heck creature type you want when you cast it to fill the journal. And you can bounce it with a couple cards in the deck. Uh, Memnite's just a free creature and he's a construct. Same thing with Opter. Fairground Drake's the combo piece that I mentioned earlier. Phantasmal Image is just a cheap illusion that allows you to copy something on the battlefield. For instance, the last game that I played in, I was a sub, but I was able to Phantasmal Image and Consecrate a Sphinx. That we could just draw a bunch of cards and uh the other person ended up milling himself on well i don't know if on accident or on purpose he was a sub too so i don't think he cared but yeah just uh, allows a lot of this allows you to have a lot of flexibility for you know two mana great card uh phyrexian walker it's an artifact or phyrexian construct so just a free uh free creature for the journal uh creon ranger this is just a way to untap your either mana dorks or untap your volo Return of Forest, and you have to have a creature once per turn. You can also do it on other people's turns if you want to keep tapping Volo to draw cards on other people's turns. You do set yourself back a little bit, but this deck doesn't have a problem with creating mana, so it's not that big a deal. Sucker of Tribe Elder. Uh, I initially had taken this out for like weeks two and three, and then I basically I put it back in. Um, I basically removed like Cultivate and added Sucker of Tribe Elder back in. Uh, it, it's a creature type, and it also is a mana ramp, and I found that... On turn three, you don't want to be cultivating, and it felt awkward. I, I was like, do I cultivate or do I play my Master Chef or do I play my Volos? And every time I thought about it, I'm like, I'd rather just play the Master Chef or I'd rather play the Volos. I didn't really need to cultivate. You never really need to. So Sucker of Tribe Elder kind of removes that that thought. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Now you can just either Sucker of Tribe Elder on turn two or Master Chef, then Volo, then Sucker of Tribe Elder, then Sack. It's a little bit... Like I said, it's a little bit strange because there's some creatures that get value that you want to cast before Volo, um, which is okay to do so. If you need the mana, then go for it. But if you don't need the mana and you have plenty of lands in hand, I would wait to then play Volo to then play him. So you're still ramping, but you're just delaying it a bit, which is fine. So Curse Tribe Stop, one of the all-stars of the deck, to be quite honest. There's a lot of ways to untap lands, or untap creatures, I mean. So the, having the ability to untap your creatures and then just keep playing lands from your hand, you're drawing so many cards per turn, you're most likely getting at least two land drops per turn, uh, three different creature types. This is just a complete all-star. Amazing. Scavenging Ooze, a way to interact with the graveyard. You're able to exile cards from the graveyard and you can stop combos and you can stop like uh, reanimation things and all of that kind of stuff. And, and it, you gain life. The life gain was actually extremely relevant for week three. Week three, I would have died if I didn't have a scavenging ooze, but because I had the ooze and I had plenty of mana, I was able to exile creatures and stay alive when everybody else got burnt. It was like a burn player. Uh, Seedborn Muse, everybody knows what Seedborn Muse is. Untap all your permanents you control during each other player's untap step. Um, it's just insane. Most likely it's going to get removed, but it eats a removal spell that would normally hit like your commander. Shrieking Drake, is this is a just a cheap Drake 1-1 one -one flyer. It allows you to bounce some creature. Uh, sometimes there are creatures that have entered the battlefield, like Coiling Oracle, or um, maybe if just, even if it just has multiple creature types, you can play the Drake and then bounce one of those creature types to then be able to uh, get a, another journal entry into the Volo's journal. So it just allows you to just keep getting those entries. You want to get that entries as high as possible because at, at any time, most of the time, I mean, at, by the end of the game, I'm drawing... 10 to 13 cards per tap of Volo. So it becomes insane. Two mana, draw 15 cards. Like, it's absolutely nuts. So, yeah. 
Uh, Cities is Faithful, basically the same thing. Uh, this allows you to s exploit it, which is nice. It's a Naga Wizard, obviously two different creature types that are not very common in the deck, so that's good. And then the exploit allows you to get fodder for the Mast... Uh, mast the Masked Vandal, I think is what it's called. Masked uh, something or other. The the Changeling that exiles a card, and then you can exile a uh, artifact or enchant. This allows you to get that creature in the graveyard. It allows you to bounce something to get another Enter the Battlefield effect or another creature type into the journal. Very good. Siren Storm Tamer. Uh, three different creature types for one mana, one one flyer. Already good value. And then also has the ability to protect a lot of your things. And it doesn't tap, so you can do it right away. Uh, but yeah, counter target spell ability that targets creature you control. Fantastic. Uh, Stone Coil Serpent, this is another zero drop that you just play it because it's a snake and it's a zero drop. And I mean, relevant, it is relevant that it has reach, trample, or reach and protection from multicolored. Trample doesn't matter because you're always going to, you're almost like nine times out of ten, you're going to play this for zero with Master Chef on the battlefield. So it comes a 1-1, one, one. just counts as a free snake for the journal. Teardrop Kami, one mana, one, one spirit. Uh, there's a couple spirits in the deck, but not that big a deal. Main thing is it's, it's there to uh, untap. One, you're basically untap Volo or untap um, Incubation Druid if it has a 1-1 one -one counter, which it should. And yeah, stuff like that. Uh, the Reality Chip, this was actually an all-star in one of the games uh, in the playtesting that I did in my local group of friends. It just allows you, allowing you to play any spell off the top of your library is pretty... It's like Bola Citadel level, but not quite as good because you can't pay life. Uh, but in a deck that has a ton of zero-drop creatures or one-drop creatures, um, this just kind of expedites that playing lands off the top is super helpful so with like fetch lands and stuff i could see it being way more strong in the deck um it is a jellyfish which there's no other jellyfishes in the deck so that's pretty nice and it has to be equipped by the way it has to be reconfigured you can do the look at the library at any time but it, you have to, in order to play stuff it has to be reconfigured which is a little expensive but not that big a deal in this deck this is another zero drop for the journal spirit monk uh, walking bliss is one of the other win cons uh, multiple different ways to get unlimited mana, as I mentioned earlier. Another one being uh, Dramatic Reversal and uh, Ice Crown Scepter. So you get infinite mana, and then you use Walking Ballista. It's a pretty common uh, combo. Wirewood Symbiote, Insect. Uh, so that not many insects in the deck. And return enough to you control to untap target creature. Only once per turn, but this is basically you return a mana dork, and you can untap Volo and draw more cards, basically. Really all you do it for. Remember, growth is just a two mana drop ramp, so you can do this on turn two, hopefully, and just ramp some the next turn. An offer you can't refuse, one of the best counter spells I think they've printed in a very long time. It um especially in a combo deck when you don't care what they do with those treasures, like they're they're gaining a ton of value if they get a turn, but most of the time in a combo deck, you're just going to combo, so that their value they never get this to, to realize that value. So yeah, great counter spell. Arcane Denial is the same kind of situation. It is a two-mana counter spell that counters any spell instead of a non-creature, and you don't really care about the card draw because they don't draw until the next turn's upkeep. And if you're going to combo off, you want really, really cheap counter spells that allow you to combo off that they don't get an extra turn, so it doesn't matter. Beast Within, just some permanent removal in, in blue-green. There's not a ton of permanent removal in blue-green, so this is just one of the kind of staples that fairly cheap, and you can destroy any permanent. You don't really care about the beast. Counter spell, just target spell. This spell, another one of those great counter spells that all you do, this is just protecting your combo. So if you go to cast your combo piece, they go counter spell, you go dispel, they cry. Um, that's kind of what happens because it's such a cheap counter spell. They're like, well, with one blue, you either have dispel or you have uh, an offer you can't refuse. There's so many different answers for one mana. It's great. Dramatic reversal, one of the uh, combo pieces, untap all permits you control. You can cast this without Escron Scepter, because you have a way to get it back with uh, Eternal Witness. And and sometimes you just need a dramatic reversal to to progress your board state a little bit further. So if you have a bunch of mana dorks and you have a bunch of mana rocks and, and you can get a ton of value from it, it's okay to use dramatic reversal outside of the infinite combo because you have a couple other ways to do infinite. It's not that big a deal, but typically you want to hold it if you can. Muddle the Mixture, this is a great counter spell. Counter target instant or sorcery, so it can protect your combo or trying to go combo off. And then if you can, or if you don't need to do that, and you need to instead transmute, it transmutes for two, which is the cost of Ezekrans up there. So you just do that. You have dramatic reversal already. Physical tutor can get either of those cards I just mentioned. You can go tutor for a tutor, I suppose, if you really, really need to. Uh, Nature's claim. This is just one of those really, really cheap removal that 
allows you to get rid of very annoying artifacts or enchantments. You don't really care about the life game at all. Doesn't matter. Negate, just a cheap non-creature counter spell. You need cheap stuff. Pact of Negation has actually saved me multiple times. Uh, who would have thought free counter spells is pretty good? You go into counter spell wars and you use this typically towards the end. You obviously you save it as long as you can. So if you were just countering back and forth. I actually, this last game that I played was with three blue players, and it was the best counter spell war I've ever had. It felt like nobody at one time was like two above each other. Everybody had like counter spells. They all had like kind of like they're all kind of playing chicken with who, which counter spell to counter what. It actually was really, really fun. The best counter spell game I've ever played. Most of the time, counter spells feel bad. But if everybody's got them and you kind of like are playing this game, it feels good. Uh, Rapid Hybridization, just cheap, really cheap creature removal. Reality Shift is kind of the same way. It's an exile, which is nice. Swan Song, really, really cheap counter spell. You don't really care about the bird they get. Uh, Veil of Summer can be pretty insane. Uh, you go to combo off, they go counter spell. You go Veil of Summer, they try to counter it. You counter that, and then everything else is good. Then you can't be countered, and then you win. Pretty good. Uh, Vitalize, very, very good. You can actually put this on Ice Crown Scepter as well, which is something that I didn't realize the first like week or two for some reason. It just didn't... I, I remember casting it in the middle of like week two and going, I have Ice Crown Scepter in my hand. I could have just won the game right there. Uh, so that was done. But again, it was one of those things where you're you're learning the deck and you're kind of learning everything you could do. Something So a PSA to you guys that Ice Crown Scepter can go infinite with this as well. If you have a couple mana dorks, um, you can, as long as you can produce three mana, basically, with your creatures, Ice Crown Scepter can be in. Cool. Uh, Worldly Tutor. This is mainly just to go get, like, I know it sounds weird, but, like, you can just go get a Birds of Paradise with Worldly Tutor if you really, like, it can, you can go get, like, a Sakura Tribe Scout, which is probably a better target, depending on your situation. If you have a ton of lands in hand, Worldly Tutor for Sakura Tribe Scout, and then just keep dropping those lands, and you're, you're doubling your mana every turn. That's uh, pretty good. You Otherwise, you can do it for, like, the Peregrine Drake combo with uh, Deadeye Navigator. You can do that as well. That's not that ba uh, bad. It's just a cheap way to draw the thing you need. Another, yeah, Obviously, another tutor. Okay, so there's a Mana Rock. Uh, Ice Crown Scepter is the thing I've been talking about, exiling an uh, instant sorcery. I'm sorry, specifically an instant card with uh, two or less. And uh, then you get to cast it for two mana. So, obviously, combos pretty well with this deck. Don't really want to do it with a counter spell. I've seen somebody do it with a counter spell, and I think that it's either going to draw unwanted hate, or rather unneeded heat, or it's just everybody can see it, so they're just going to target you down. You know, it's just not going to just waiting for the infinite combo. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it on a counter spell. Um, Soul Ring, another mana rock. Swiftfoot boost to protect your commander mainly. Uh, I really wouldn't put it on anything else, to be quite honest. I'll just mainly keep it on your commander. He doesn't get that. Rem he doesn't get removed that often. At least it ha hasn't in the last month. He's gotten removed like twice, out of like all. I, I subbed two games, so I did six games, and he died twice, total. So I don't know if that's just because he's so out off the radar of people. They don't like understand. Like basically, by the time you, s by the time they realize that you're getting like so much value, they're just like, oh, he's drawing like ten cards a turn. Like that's because you, you're dropping a bunch of zero drops in one turn. I had a turn the one I think it was work week three where I only had two creatures on the field and then I won that turn. It was just Volo and something else, but I had like this fire turn. It was just like creature, 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 uh, play. It was just it was nuts. It, I, I was able to go infinite out of nowhere. It was pretty awesome. So the deck has a very high uh, out of nowhere potential, which is cool. Uh, Thought vessel. This is just a mana rock, but it also has no maximum hand size because you do draw a ton of cards. So you want that. Thousand Elixir, another MVP of the deck. This allows you to, the moment you play this, you can play any of your mana dorks to play your mana dorks. You could be like mana dork, tap for a mana dork, man, or green, play a mana dork, tap for a green, play a mana dork. I actually did this multiple times. And uh, what it allows you to do is you can do like blah, 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 drop a bunch of mana dorks, and then you're using like all of your, all of your mana to do that, and then you vitalize and untap all of them. And then you just have like a billion more mana. Then you like do 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 do, play more stuff, untap uh, Volo, draw some more cards. You're drawing ten. You you, it's just it's just good. You just have to play the deck. It's it's just nutty. I mean, it could just be Simic. I'm I'm fairly new to playing this kind of Simic, this kind of like borderline CEDH Simic. Um, so yeah, Creature of the Real, another combo piece. Just untaps a creature. You can put this on Volo. This is not a bad thing. It becomes three mana to to draw however many you have on the journal. Which a lot of the times is like 
8, 10, 15. It's fairly easy to get. And the journal has hexproof, so it's like pretty hard to remove. But yeah. yeah. Install energy. This is another one that you can enchant. You basically use it to enchant on Navolo. You can use it on Incubation Druid. It, you get six mana per, per turn. That's a lot of mana. So it's useful. Uh, I think I've done it once, but mainly this goes on Volo to be able to draw more cards. Wizard class is just another thing that has no maximum hand size. I actually don't think I ever did this, but maybe once. Because you have so much card draw on Volo, you're kind of like, do I pay three mana to draw two? Or do I pay two mana to draw ten? You know? Um, then we're into the lands now. Park Bark Channel Pathway. These are you have to remember these are just uh, a lot of the budget th lands, so you're not gonna see like dual lands or anything. Uh Beseju, crucial. Actually very good. There's a time where Somebody went to go infinite, and oh, it was the wizard bracers onto Alondo. And I was able to use Baseju to kill it because it can't be countered. It's just a channel ability. The guy had a counter spell ready for it, but he couldn't he couldn't do it because it's a channel ability. Um, so strong, so good, so cheap. It's just two mana, and, and you're gonna have your commander most likely, so it's gonna be one. So for one single green, just channel uncounterable, besides like I think rifle, maybe? Um, yeah. There's a, maybe a couple things that can do it, but yeah, this is very, very uncounterable for the most part. Uh, just a multicolored land, dual land, forest, hinterland harbor, some islands. Reliquary tower because you want no maximum hand size. And then another dual land. This dual land, you can, don't, don't feel bad to sack this and then draw a card. You probably don't need to do it, but if you're just like land flooded and you like tapped your commander and you like drew like three and then you're like, I still got nothing. You could just get rid of it. Just draw another card. Fine. Um, and then these were the uh, considering. And I'll leave a link down to the deck in the description below. So if you like the deck tech, or if you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave them down in the uh, comments section. And I will answer any comments down there. You can check the, the considering section for the cards that I thought were potentially... Uh, worth including like intruder alarm is another good one that can be pretty nutty with how many zero drops and one drops you play you can get a ton of value that way uh, can be a little risky but for the most part it's not and uh yeah thanks for watching everybody and volo honestly one of the strongest budget commanders i think i've ever played uh, i guess barring kinnon kinnon was pretty insane too but um, he was on a dub double the budget this was on just a hundred dollar budget even the hundred dollar version of the deck was still insane very fun to play. It it wins the same way as Kinnon, but it doesn't win. It doesn't feel bad when you win because you're doing a ton. And that's another thing. I like, I guess I like, I don't say grindy decks. I like decks that you're doing a lot. You're not just like one big spell, it gets countered or, or destroyed, and then you pass a turn. It doesn't feel like you're doing much. In this deck, you're just playing like, on average, you're playing like three to five per turn. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, like I said, can win out of nowhere and does all kind of crazy stuff. Tons of creatures. It plays a tons of things that people don't play. I don't know. I love it. Volo was Volo was very fun. One of the best reasons I like the uh, these leagues that I'm in, uh, Jake and Joel are Magic, like the random commander leagues, because like you get dealt something and you're like, I don't know. It doesn't really seem exciting. And then you build the deck and you're like, okay, hold on. And then you play the deck and you're like, oh, this is one of my favorite. Com this is definitely top five favorite commanders. Pretty cool. But yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. And, uh, keep an eye out for the on the channel for another. Uh, the next video is probably going to be about Double Masters, kind of reviewing the prices, seeing where they're at, comparing it to the other video that I made. So, yep, see you guys later.